Hi everyone, this is Chris and welcome to another one of my movie discussion videos. In this video, I'm going to be discussing expectations for the upcoming Bumblebee movie, which releases next month in December. We're at the point now where all the main trailers have been released, we've got a whole bunch of posters that have come out in the last few weeks, and also TV spots have finally started popping up. So I figured now is the best time to sort of set our expectations and predictions of what to expect from this movie given that now we have a whole bunch of marketing going on right now. So in terms of how this movie is going to turn out based on the trailers, I'm usually pretty good when it comes to determining how a movie is going to turn out based on the trailers. Just this year, 2018, I was able, the three Marvel movies that came out, Black Panther, Infinity War, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, those trailers looked great and those turned out to be great movies. But the trailers for Solo and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom to me, those trailers were sort of a mixed bag, and true enough, those movies turned out to be a mixed bag, more so on the downside of things, but still a mixed bag nonetheless. And then you got trailers for stuff like Venom, The Predator, and The Grinch, which to me, those trailers just looked bad, and it turns out I was right. Those movies were absolute pieces of shit, in my opinion. When it comes to the trailers for Bumblebee, I think this looks like a really fun adventure, or at the bare minimum, just a fun, solid uh, movie-going experience which is what a lot of people would not say about the previous Transformers films. I think this looks like a, re a really fun adventure, a story that has a whole lot of heart and is more character focused than the previous Transformers films, more character and story focused, given that this is mainly focusing on one character, Bumblebee, and his relationship with his human compadre, Charlie, which has been the main sort of thing we've seen throughout these trailers, a story that's throwing a whole lot of heart. It really is trying to distinguish itself from the previous Transformers films. They're doing a really good job of that while also having a whole lot of action and spectacle which has been shown in these trailers. I gotta say the TV spots that have been popping up in the last few days have gotten me really hyped because the action looks like it's really going to deliver. Stuff like uh, Bumblebee versus Blitzwing looks great, Bumblebee versus Dropkick, all the transformations, the Cybertron scene I'm really excited to, to see. Cybertron stuff they're showing with the whole G1 aesthetic that's a really good way to win people back over in terms of Transformers fi fi of franchise fans who have just felt burnt out by the movies. Bring in some nostalgia to have some G1 stuff. That'll bring back people in and sort of give them faith that, okay, at least they're trying to appeal us now, even though we've felt sort of burnt out by the previous entries. And I really enjoy the posters that have been released recently for this movie. I think the posters look really nice. I really like the main poster they did for this movie, the fi main theatrical poster. Reminds me of the Rogue One poster, how it was structured, but I just think it looks uh, really nice and I really dig that poster. So yeah, all the elements that have come for this film, the trailers, the marketing, TV spots, posters, I think look really good and doing a really good job of sort of trying to win people back when it comes to the Transformers franchise. So with all that good stuff, this film should be a runaway success at the box office, right? Well, here's the thing. I think this movie, no matter how good it looks, I think it's got two major things working against it, which is really going to hurt its prospects financially, in my opinion. The first major hurdle that this film is going to have to get over is the stench of the previous Transformers films. And that stench is largely due to the presence of Michael Bay. Now, obviously, people had big problems with what Bay did with the previous Transformers films. I enjoy his work on the movies, though I do have major problems with The Last Night and Revenge of the Fallen, but in general, I was a fan of the franchise. I enjoyed some of the elements the movies brought to the table, but obviously there were a whole lot of people that did not, and they're carrying over that cynicism to Bumblebee. I do think they've done a good job with the trailers of not putting produced by Michael Bay, because I think that just would have been a terrible idea. I think his name is sort of box office poison. Because he sort of had a string of box office bombs now, and I think people just don't, when they hear his, see his name, they just associate his name with just sort of bad quality when it comes to filmmaking among film junkies and just people, general moviegoers now, uh, just have a really bad taste for Michael Bay right now. And that cynicism has carried over to people that I've just talked to in general. My sister, she saw the trailer for Bumblebee when she saw Ralph Breaks the Internet last week, and she just told me that Michael Bay just needs to stop. And I had to tell her, 
No, 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 he's not directing this movie. You don't have to you don't have to carry over that hate. This is a new director. And I have a friend at work from where I work at at Disneyland telling me, I'm just not excited for the movie just because I just don't care about I'm just tired of Michael Bay. And I had to tell him, No, 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 you're getting this wrong. Michael Bay is not directing this movie. It's a whole new director, new to the franchise, that's gonna bring some new life. Uh, who, who, if you didn't know, Travis Knight, director of Kubo and the Two Strings, he's coming over. It's going to be a fresh new vision that's really going to try and right the wrongs from the previous movies, the people that had problems with those previous movies. Well, so that kind of sort of bad taste of people's mouths from Michael Bay is sort of a major hurdle this film is going to have to get over. Just that previous hate that people have felt for the Transformers franchise. And that culminated in The Last Night, which was a critical and financial disaster. The first financial disaster that the franchise has suffered. Because it only did $130 million in the U.S., which for this series is really bad when you look at how the previous films did. And then the second hurdle this film is going to have to get over, which I think is sort of its, its biggest problem right here, is just, it's got just so much competition it's got to deal with in the month of December. Look at the release slate for December, and it is absolutely jam-packed with movies that just look really damn good and movies I'm really excited to see including Bumblebee. He gets things started off with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse which opens up December 8th. That looks just fantastic. It looks like a gorgeous movie but just like a really fun time. It's been a great year for Spider-Man. Then after that you got Mary Poppins Returns which opens up on a Wednesday December 19th and that looks like it's going to bring in some uh, going to be a good fun time at the movies. A good sort of whimsical Disney adventure, people who love Mary Poppins, that nostalgia, people are going to be bringing that in. And then on December 21st, you got the release of Aquaman and Bumblebee on the same date, that Friday. And to a lesser degree, something like uh, Mortal Engines comes out in between all of those December 14th. Now, admittedly, I never read the book. I don't know the source of material. I'm having a hard time predicting how that movie is going to be. So when you look at the release schedule, that release slate for all of those movies, that is just too jam-packed. And no matter how good these movies turn out to be, and I think they all look really great, I just think this movie, I just think all of those movies going to end up suffering at the box office just because it's not good business to release all those movies at the same time because they're going to eat at each other's business. Especially something like Aquaman and Bumblebee releasing on the same day. Those are two movies going after the same demographic, that same sort of franchise-loving, big blockbuster uh, demographic of people that just want to go have a fun time at the movies, see some spectacle and all that. And Aquaman, which I didn't really touch on, I think the more trailers that have released have just looked fantastic. It looks like it's going to be just a great movie, a really sort of groundbreaking in terms of those visuals and how they're doing it, but it just looks like it's going to be a really good story, something that that DC universe desperately needs, much like how the Transformers universe desperately needs Bumblebee to be a hit. So in terms of predicting how these movies are going to turn out at the box office, I'm just going to be talking domestic right now. I think the top spot is going to go to Aquaman, it being a superhero film. The first superhero film really since uh, Venom, not counting into the Spider-Verse also. I think Aquaman is going to be the top hit of the holiday season. I think it's going to do uh, $305 million domestically. Uh, you look around, that's what the DC films largely average in terms of U.S. box office. So I'm going with 305 for Aquaman. Second place, I'm going to go It's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I think that's definitely going to do over 200 million. I'm going to predict 210 million. Just looks like a really fun time. Like I said, Spider-Man this year, it's been a great year for him. People are on a high because of that Spider-Man PS4 game. People are obviously excited for Spider-Man Far From Home next year. So I think this is going to carry over that goodwill and do 210. Next at number three, I've got Mary Poppins Returns. This one I think is going to be a really good family movie that people, a lot of families going to go see. I think, and because it's Disney, I think it's going to do 180 million. It's not it's some giant spectacle blockbuster, nothing like that. So that's why it's kind of tough to predict. But when you go through all those factors I named, I think 180 is a good prediction for that movie because it does look really good. And unfortunately, at fourth place, I've got Bumblebee. Like I said, those major factors has got working against it, mainly the the people's feelings for the previous films and how it's just so jam-packed. I'm going to go 170 million, which the good news for this movie is the fact that the budget is 125 million, which is a jump up from what they originally reported that it was going to be like a 90 million dollar movie. 125 million seems a fair budget for this one, but that means that it doesn't have to make as much to be a success. 
uh, it can make a lesser amount and still be a profitable movie, including worldwide box office, which I think worldwide is going to do about 500 million, I would say. And if it can do that, I would call that a success for this movie. If this movie does end up just being a failure or just doesn't do well financially and critic wise, especially, then I think it's just full on reboot time. They've had their chance to fix their franchise. They've really had it four times over and they just could not get it done. So yeah, if they can't do it with this one, uh, reboot time, whole new continuity, uh, whole new direction, just everything. If this movie does end up being success, then I think what they'll do is sort of soft reboot things where it'll be tied into the previous films, but they won't sort of uh, be slaves to that original continuity. Maybe do their own things, just soft reboot things. Maybe uh, they'll probably go ahead and go forward with that Optimus Prime movie that the producer was talking about. Uh, I definitely would like to see that. And will we eventually get a tra Transformer 6? Who knows, sort of tough to tell now, but Bumblebee will definitely be a major, actually the deciding factor, determining if we will ever see a Transformer 6. So if this movie ends up being as good as I think it can be, then I hope that uh, Paramount and Hasbro end up keeping Travis Knight, the director of Bumblebee, because news came out last week that Marvel's looking for him to sort of uh, take the helm of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and my opinion is that Marvel, y'all had your chance with that franchise, and you blew it by firing your director, unfairly I will say. So no, Hasbro and, Transfor and Transformers Hasbro, they need to keep Travis Knight if Bumblebee can be a success because you could, you've got to keep the man that revived this franchise and hopefully you can continue doing more films that sort of build Transformers back up and really gives people that goodwill for Transformers in the general public, at the box office, everything. So it's no longer a laughing stock. No matter what though, I've sort of accepted the fact that I think the main series is pretty much toast in terms of Transformers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That story, I just, I'm just not sure we're ever going to see that go again. Uh, finish off that Unicron thing that happened in the last night. Which, you know, that news came out back in February of this year. It took a little bit of time to get over, but I'm largely over it. Franchises end all the time on sort of abrupt, improper endings. It is what it is, so I'm not losing any sleep about it anymore. But would I eventually like to see Transformers 6? Yes, but I'm not exactly crying about it anymore. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, my expectations for Bumblebee. I think it would end up being a, definitely a good solid movie, definitely the best critic-wise when it comes to Transformers films. At the box office, I think it's going to be a decent success, solid success, nothing groundbreaking, not a billion dollar movie, nothing like that, but definitely something that uh, will Paramount can uh, feel decently about. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all around with another discussion.